Hi, I recently started to learn and have fun with GraphQL and Apollo. Very great tool to build your own API easily and faster. In this video, I'm just going to show you guys how can I access to the SQL database, get all the data that I want, and then push all those data into the API uh, server. So for the API server, I have uh, GraphSQL, the same, uh, Node.js, but in my model, I have MongoDB. I'm using MongoDB. So this is the idea. Um, get the data from the SQL server in the client, push the data into the REST API, and then save it into the MongoDB. So, for this experiment, I already create a small application that is going to be running into the client side and it's going to be in charge to connect into with the SQL server. And another application, this is my REST API that is in charge to listen, um, insert, um, retrieve uh, um, uh, all those data. That we already have. So at the left hand, I have this small application. So I'm using MS SQL uh, dependency. It's very easy to use. It's just I'm passing a stream with my query. So this is the same stream that I have here. Here, this is my virtual machine using Windows, I'm running SQL Server, so everything is running fine. So I already have uh, 4,000, uh, for almost 5,000 role in this document. So the, the main idea is get all this data, this is a, a lot of product that we already have, and push to my server. I want to make like a synchronization stuff like this. So let's see. Um, first of all, in this small application, I'm fetching this data from my query, my previous query, and grabbing this data using promise, um, wait for the response, then um, get a response. I get a big array with a lot of objects, but all those objects uh, has a single quote. So something that I realized is GraphSQL, when I got, for example, this server data, and I, I was trying to push this big array that I, that I already have in my data, uh, I have a bad request. Uh, GraphSQL is because GraphSQL doesn't like uh, single quote. It doesn't support single quote. So this is something that I've noticed and I have to fix it out. And I fix it out using this uh, dependency. Um, after that, I'm using Apollo Client to connect to my remote server, in this case, my local host. And then I made the mutation, I made a mutation using add products that it's expecting a product, a list of products, so a big array. So I already have this at products created in my server, in my API. So this is my API at the right. Um, as you can see, my schema, let's see one second. It's um, here um, when I create all my notation, I already have products. So as you can see, it's expecting a product input Product input, it's already defined. Define it here. This is my product input with my code, barcode, names, classification, the same data structure that I'm grabbing from here. So it's the same query. In, the, in this query, it is the code, barcode, name. I'm trying to use the same uh, data structure, the same names in both because once I get my array of 
all those of the of the result of this query I'm just gonna push this result and then I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to use it without any modification so here uh, as you can see we are expecting an array of this the same object so this is the, the trick and I already I already have defined defined um, the product type the same like my product input and also my schema that I'm using uh, for Mongo to create my schema with the same actually the same all, all the same properties um, the name of my collections is gonna call product so these products here we can see let me refresh this so we don't have any product I already dropped it drop it out so it's already deleted so now the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my server because I'm gonna try to see the the SQL the SQL UI so run my server is running so I'm gonna be should be able to connect into my local host API and there we go, we have the GraphSQL interface for the building. Um, we don't have any products, product is empty. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to route my small application that is in charge to connect with the SQL server and get all those data. So now, start. Now, it's, it's already got got all the data so it's about 1.5 megabytes data immediately is pushing to the server and it's waiting you know the server process all those uh, requests but as can you see we're gonna show you something uh, so this pro this process is about 5000 but it's very fast also so it should get done quickly um, but the, the good thing of that is because I'm getting this, this big array with this object here. Oh, it's already, pretty, it's already done. So add products, products insert that. So it's, like I said, it's getting all the data in a, into an array. Then use the mutation. I add this uh, add products mutation they get past all this big array, then this notation called this guy here, this is the, the method for, for the notation already created, and I just grab the payload product, and using Mongoose, it's just passing this big bulk, so I'm poof, insert, insert all of them immediately quickly so fast so now that we have all my products in inserted so we should be able to see the products collection here and uh, we can see all the documents so we have the same documents that we have into our local server so now we should be able to to play with GraphQL, so completely, really fast, so let me fetch more data, like 500, and cool, I, I, I'm taking the advantage of, of you know, add more and more fields, uh, autocomplete, code, whatever, that I have, I already have all my information here, um, it's the same information that I have in my local, so I need to this synchronization project for 5,000 clone it took for about, um, I don't know, 10, 10 seconds. So it's very powerful. I really like the, the way like GraphSQL provide us. At the beginning, it's a little bit 
a little bit confused like everything, but as soon as you get used to it, um, it's very straightforward, it's very nice to use. So we can create our backend quickly, more quickly, uh, very fast. I'm also using the same technology in the front end and the back end using Node.js, JavaScript here. So we don't have to switch between language like, like I used to do. Um, running uh, using the backend PSP or, or, or something else, uh, or Laravel for a running backend and then switch back to the JavaScript and then uh, this is, uh, yeah. Um, that's all for now. Thank you.